The Cuttermans, a true example of a family that slays together, stays together, quite literally. The movie begins with cheerful sounds in a happy suburb which soon turn dark. A woman screams for a man to stop, but his gloved hands wander over her body. She cannot do anything but plead, tied to a stretcher, as that man brings out a surgical knife and brutally mutilates her breast. The scene changes, and we move downtown as Sam enters Lewis's office to congratulate him. Apparently, the medical board has announced that they are honoring Lewis as the foremost brain surgeon in the country. That means that he will be the recipient of the prestigious Mayflower Award. At the police station, a detective named Ralph writes down a missing complaint of a woman, the same one we saw mutilated in the beginning. Turns out, six people have gone missing in the last three months and the police can't seem to figure out any connection. At the hospital, a rich couple lament how their only daughter Maria had damaged both of her kidneys, but is unable to find a match with any donor, no matter how many calls the parents have made. Sadly, she's only got two weeks left. Right then, a burly man arrives, ominously telling the couple that he can help them. Soon after, siblings Scott and Nicole Cutterman, Lewis's children, excitedly receive the order for a kidney from Maria's parents. In exchange for $125,000, they call Lewis to tell both him and their mom Rachel about the order and he weirdly says, one kidney coming up after dinner, and soon leaves for home. Rachel tells the kids to check on their patients and Nicole asks her if she can practice her technique since she has been assisting her parents in whatever creepy thing they do in their basement. After her agreement, Nicole and Scott run off to another room in the house, where we see many people lying on hospital beds in a daze, many with their limbs cut off. The woman from the beginning also lays there, dead, and the siblings proceed to practice on her by removing her brain with glee. Meanwhile, the detectives continue to run in circles trying to figure out where all these missing people are. Back with the Cuttermans, one patient, William, dares to call out the crazy family and gets his tongue brutally slashed off. Nicole makes sure to threaten the other patients with it. Meanwhile, Ralph insinuates that the missing people might be together, and yes, that's all that comes out of that conversation. Later, Mindy, a realtor, rings the doorbell at the Cutterman house. Shameless flirting between her and Scott ensues, and he ends up inviting her to dinner at the house. There's some tension between Mindy and Nicole while the realtor tells them that her boss has no idea where she's getting customers from. Both Rachel and Nicole sound all too happy about that. Of course, Mindy has fallen right into the family's trap. All that disgusting flirting continues, but is soon followed by Lewis arriving home. The dinner almost seems pleasant until Scott drugs Mindy's wine and insinuates that the meat she's eating is human. Drunken conversation with Mindy and Suze and we discover more about the family's side business of body parts, real body parts. Rachel is the head nurse and Scott and Nicole run the back office for orders. Although before she can ask about this more, Mindy passes out and is taken downstairs with the other patients. While Mindy is being attached to all the machines, Rachel condescendingly threatens poor William, insinuating that she killed her youngest child because he never understood the importance of not using foul language. We then meet the kidney donor Jack, and flesh crunching sounds fill our ears as Jack's kidney is surgically removed amidst flashes of Maria's parents' sadness. Elsewhere, tensions rise as the two detectives arrive and promptly leave the hospital right before the donated kidney arrives for Maria. Soon, we see a doctor informing another set of parents that their son is in dire need of a new heart. The burly man watches this interaction and promptly informs Scott of the need for a heart as well as the fact that the cops were here inquiring about some missing persons. Soon after, a machine whirs as Scott destroys the bones of all their dead patients and the siblings discuss how it was rude to serve Mindy some dessert. Also, Nicole is wearing Mindy's blouse, a cruel joke on the patient whose lady has just turned upside down. As Nicole goes to the grocery store, we see that she is being watched by someone, or stalked more like. Suddenly, a man comes out of the darkness trying to harass her. Her earring falls on the ground amidst the attack, but she doesn't notice. Nicole placates the man for a while, doing the deed willingly, but then brings out a knife from her. At the speed of light, she cuts off the man's privates, right before running the knife across his neck. And if this wasn't disgusting enough, she proceeds to chomp on some of his flesh, saying that it would have tasted better with mustard. At the station, Ralph gets informed about this man's murder with the specific information that his privates are missing. He, along with Detective Jules, quickly enter the scene, and Jules obviously locates Nicole's expensive earring. They have one lead, finally. Elsewhere, Mindy wakes up, crying for help. 
The other patients inform her of what has been going on, and we witness the common ground between them. All of them arrived at the Cutterman home trying to sell the family one thing or the other, and all of them are alone, with no one knowing where they are. Mindy's boss doesn't bother to check where his employees are getting clients from. One of the patients is a single mom, another only has his mom who's in an old age home, another's wife passed away and his kids rarely visit. Finally, they inform Mindy that the Cuttermen sell the patient's body parts on the black market and, of course, the fact that they consume human flesh. Upstairs, the family swoons over their profits while the family discusses their dinner plans. After Rachel and Louis leave, Nicole and Scott take Mindy away for her punishments, just because she complained too much. Right after Nicole threatens poor William again, we see Mindy tied to a slab as she struggles all the way. Scott proceeds to inject her with morphine and goes on to pull out a mini chainsaw. We all know what's coming next. Mindy's right leg is taken away and so is her hand. Of course, this is all for the roast and appetizers the family discussed earlier. Afterwards, the family cleans and preps these chopped parts, just like you would any normal meal. Meanwhile, Jules tells Ralph that there's only one jeweler in the entire city that carries that earring's specific design. Also, their captain wants them to start conducting door-to-door -door interviews to see if anyone can ID any of these missing people. And finally, Ralph finds a point. Each one of these people seem to have non-traditional jobs, meaning they didn't just sit in an office, they're out and about, just the perfect victims for a serial killer. Elsewhere, the Cuttermans are toasting to their oh-so-loving family when the doorbell rings. It's the two detectives. They soon leave, though, because why would Lewis confess that he knows all the people that they've been searching for? Also, the family is going to deliver the heart tonight in exchange for $350,000, and the donor this time is going to be poor William. Downstairs, he is given the pre-op anesthesia and rolled over to the operating table. The surgery is gruesome, and the film doesn't hold anything back. All the while it's going on, we see flashes of different events. Lewis quizzing Nicole about the process, the parents sobbing about their son's condition, the burly man delivering the organ, Scott handling the business end of their work. We see it all. Next day, Scott is gardening when he unfortunately has to talk to his annoying neighbor. Oh, also he reveals that he adds some bone meal to his garden to keep it blooming. Suspiciously, the neighbor promises to keep this their little secret. Later, the two detectives arrive at the jeweler, asking about the earring. The scene cuts as soon as the sales lady leaves to get the address of the purchase. Meanwhile, the patients are dejected by William's condition and by the fact that they have no possible way to escape. One of them, Jack, bravely says that if he's not going to go down without reducing the family's assets, we also find that all of them have one of their legs and hand cut off, just like Mindy. Jack soon gets up and turns off William's life support. When the siblings rush in, he takes all the blame. Unfortunately, he is introduced to the punishment chair. This means that they're not going to give them any pain medication now on. Jack's leg is brutally taken off and they don't even let him faint from the pain. Then the drill comes out. It goes right into the bottom of Jack's mouth and he's woken up again. His eyes are about to follow, but Jack headbutts the scalpel, eliminating himself. But this doesn't stop the two siblings as they quite disgustingly proceed to carve out his eye and consume it. All this while, the other patients are screaming at the terrifying incident they've been forced to witness. The information soon gets to Lewis and he writes it off as a business loss as they lost two sellable, valuable commodities. Again, Rachel discusses what they're going to have for dinner. Take a guess. It's not vegetables. Back home, the siblings bet $25,000 that William's liver is going to taste better than Jack's while the two corpses are hung up on the ceiling. Late at night, the family is together when the doorbell rings again. Another salesman, this time of perfumes. Nicole invites him in and the family toasts to their new victim. Oh, and his drink is drugged too. Back with the police, the two detectives have been reassigned to another case as there have been no progress in their current case. The entire city has been assigned to the kidnapping of the mayor's niece, and the missing persons are being sent to cold storage. Jules is rightfully pissed. Next morning, Rachel tells Louis her desire to move houses and he agrees to look around if it'll make her happy. Meanwhile, Jean has been treated just like the other patients. He curses the siblings in his French accent and he is introduced to the other patients. The patients beg the family to let them go, but their pleas fall to deaf ears, just like always. Louis even says to them condescendingly, the patients are the wrong ones in this situation. Since they chose to come to the Cutterman house even after looking at the no solicitors warning sign outside, 
Late at night, a robber breaks into the Cutterman house and finds the prisoners. Mindy is awake and she asks the robber to help them. The argument goes on when Nicole arrives with a knife. The two struggle for a moment, but the robber manages to escape. Fortunately, the annoying neighbor, Mrs. Rogers, catches sight of the burglar escaping and calls the police, aka Ralph. Alas, Ralph doesn't send anyone to investigate as Mrs. Rogers is known as the neighborhood busybody. Next morning, the Cuttermans are again busy discussing their cannibalistic dinner plans as Nicole's cousin is about to arrive that night. No one except Nicole seems concerned about what happened with the burglar last night. That night, the doorbell rings, but it's not Kate, it's Ralph. He shows Nicole the earring, a serious look on his face. Alas, things don't go the way we thought they would. Nicole squeals in delight, glad to have her earring back, and it is revealed that Ralph is their cousin. He has been taking care to not bring attention to the family. He also takes the burglar's fingerprints from the house and determines that it's no cause for concern, because if she does come ahead with information, it's gonna land on Ralph's desk and he'll take care of it. Next morning, Jules watches on with suspicion as Ralph tells Lewis all this information. Also, the missing persons cases are being closed. Such a delight. Later, Lewis and Rachel tell their kids that the family's going to move. What follows is a montage of the move. Scott will sterilize the cutting room and the freezer to make sure there are no traces that can be detected. As for the current sellables, aka the patients, they will be deleted and the family will start anew. The film ends similar to how it began. A woman tied to a bed, begging for help. But this time, the mutilation isn't being done by gloved hands. It's Ralph, dressed in woman's clothes. He swoons about how she's gonna taste delicious and jumps ahead.